QuickBooks Online 2024 Profit and Loss Export to Excel. Get ready and some trail mix because we're taking a quick trip with QuickBooks Online 2024. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up our major financial statement reports like we do every time, the reports are on the left hand side. Within our favorite reports, right-clicking on that balance sheet, open link in a new tab. Right-clicking on the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement, open link in new tab. Go into that middle tab, closing up the hand boogie, scrolling up so we can change that range. Going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. Tabbing on over to the right, closing the hamburger, scrolling up so we can change that range once again. Going from 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. So now we want to think about presenting our reports once again to, say, a client, this time using the format of exporting to Excel and using Excel possibly to do some further formatting of the reports, giving a bit more of a special touch to them that might differentiate us from others, and then using a PDF printer to, to print all of the reports on one PDF file. So a quick recap, if we're giving reports to somebody else, we can email it to them with an attachment, but we probably want to zip the file. We can print it, but these days a lot of stuff is electronic. We can export it to Excel, but you don't typically want to give an Excel file to somebody else. However, you can use Excel to format the file and then, uh, and then use a PDF printer to put it on one PDF file, which is what we'll do this time. We can export it as a PDF, possibly giving it to people as a, to our client as a uh, zipped file in an email or possibly on a cloud drive, Amazon Cloud, OneDrive, something like that, Dropbox. And we looked at the management report, which is another format that can allow us to put it on one PDF file. However, there are some limitations with that because we don't have as much customization as we would if we export the files to Excel, which is what we will do this time. Now, last in, in our last section, we created this file from our uh, reports on the balance sheet. And then we made this balance sheet report from it. So we had three types of balance sheets on it. So now we'll do a similar process adding to this. Now, if you, have, if you don't have this file, that's okay. You could just start a new uh, file and then add reports. But we're just going to add some tabs to our balance sheet reports, which will be the income statement format type reports so that we can put them all on one PDF file using a PDF printer. So let's check that out. So I've got to make the reports again. I'll do it fairly quickly because we've seen them in the past. No matter what our method is, whether it be the management report, PDF reports, and so on, using the customization tool might be the best way to go so that we can have an easy format to create our external reports uh, at the end of the month. So let's do that again quickly. I'm going to say first, let's let's collapse up here. I'm going to call this our summary balance sheet. So I'm going to call it an or income statement, income statement summary. And then I will copy that name. I'm going to customize the report to the normal customization. No sense, negative numbers bracketed, red header and footer. Let's get rid of the date, time, report basis. Goodbye, those things. And there it is, looks MUI B to the N, B N. So we're gonna save customization, put it in a new group, which is gonna be called month and reports. And then I'm gonna add that, there is our group. I'm gonna put a number four after this one because that's the report that we're on uh, in here, uh, report number four, which I have here. So I'll save that. Uh, let's save it. Do -do -do, and we'll say save it. Let's go to the first tab, see if it showed up in the customized area. Refreshing the screen so it can figure out what's going on here. There it is. So there's our drop down. 
Boom, it doesn't have the report within it though. That is muy extraño, strange. We're gonna say, let's save customization and on the income statement, let's do it again. Save customization, save it. I told you to save it. And maybe I didn't tell you to do it. Maybe I forgot to tell you. Maybe it's my fault. Maybe it's my fault. Okay. I accept responsibility for that one particular error, but usually it's your fault, QuickBooks. Any case, let's, let's do a vertical analysis this time. So we can select, uh, let's expand it, and then we'll do a vertical analysis. We'll do percent of the income and then run it. So there we have that, changing the name, income statement, vertical, vertical analysis. Boom, I'm gonna copy that, copy that, and let's customize, let's save the customization on that one. And I'm gonna call this one, this should be number, income statement, this should be number five, which I didn't number the last one. Let's save that. Let's go back to the first tab, check it out, refreshing. This one, I didn't put a, a name on this one. That one should be number four. I'm gonna edit it. I did that on purpose so I can show you that we can edit that. Put a four here, boom, and then save it. And, and then I can fix it thusly. And then let's do one more. We'll do a, a, just a quarter by quarter report. So I'll bring this back to the norm and then dropping down the quarters. We'll say, let's do a quarter by quarter and I'll change the name. Once again, income statement QT. I'll just say Q by quarter by quarter. And then I'll copy that. And then we'll save customization again. And so I'm gonna boom, I'm gonna say, this is gonna be number six. Dot, dot, income statement by quarter. Okay. Let's go back to the first tab, run it again to refresh it. There are our reports. Now, if I didn't have these open and it, as months passed under this method, I could do the same thing. I would have my four, three balance sheet reports and then my income statement reports. I would open them one at a time. Since I can't right click and open in a new tab, I can go in here, right click, duplicate, and then I'm going to open up the first one. And this time I'm gonna export it to Excel. So I'm gonna export it to Excel. Boom, opens it up right there. I'm just gonna open it up. Now, if, if you're practicing this and you don't have the other report already open, then you can make this your, your save this as your income statement reports and use this as the one that you're gonna put all your tabs on. We already have one over here with our balance sheet on it. So I wanna move this report to that other one in a new tab. Easiest way to do that, right click on the tab down below, save or move, and then I'm going to move it to this file, which will only be there if you have the two files open. So I'll select that one and then move it, and then it moves it right there. So now I'm gonna drag it to the right and I'm gonna drag it to the right. So I got my balance sheet stuff and then our profit and loss, I'm gonna double click on it, call it P and L summary. And then I usually go to the layout tab to the right, back to the left. I could see it fits on one page. I might wanna make it a little bit larger. So I might select, for example, what I'm gonna do is, is un, undo these, uh, the mergings here. Uh, maybe I don't need to do that. I'll, I'll select column A, right click, and I'm gonna insert another column. And then I just wanna make sure that these two columns are the same length. And so now I've kind of centered the reports between those two columns. That's one way that you can do it. You might like, I like to make this one a little bit smaller so it's not 